So thank you, Arpit, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick update on what Open Networking Foundation has been doing for last year or more, and also tell you um, that in the process of kind of driving SDN, NFV with disaggregation and open source, we ended up kind of inventing or creating a unique open source model that we call curated open source. And I will try to both tell you what we have been doing and then also try to tell you why and how we ended up inventing this unique open source model that we call curated open source. Okay? So the first thing is that I hope you all know that Open Networking Foundation's mission has been to help network operators transform their infrastructure and services. And the idea is to help operators bring lot more capex and opex efficiencies as well as help network operators invent new revenue generating services on top of that infrastructure. Andre Fuich, who is the CTO of AT&T, keeps saying that I want to turn my network infrastructure into a platform for innovation and a platform for innovative services and that's what we are trying to do. And the way we are trying to do this is by pushing SDN and NFV cloudification as innovative architectures forward. But in addition to that, using leveraging disaggregation and white boxes and open source. So what is important to recognize about ONF and the mission we are after is we are not only about open source, we are not only about SDN or we are not only about disaggregation. We strongly believe that if we are going to bring about this transformation and if we are going to help operators succeed in this transformation, we have to drive all these three things, SDN, NFE architecturally, we have to push for disaggregation uh, to bring the economies and all that and we have to push for open source and when we drive all of these things together, that is how we can bring about this transformation. But now when you look at if you want to drive disaggregation, open source, SDN, NFV together, what that leads to is you transform a network, either today's network or future network built using closed proprietary boxes to something like this where you are building this infrastructure with simpler forwarding devices built with merchant silicon and white boxes, the SDN and the NFE control plane that is realized using you can call network operating system and then on top of that you have network and management control applications, you have virtual network functions, you may have services and all of that and that is what you build on top of this infrastructure. Now, what I want to emphasize is that when we are doing this disaggregation and bringing open source and NFV, we are not only talking about doing it to package switches in data centers. We are bringing this approach to open line systems or OLTs for broadband access. That is how you build GPON, XGSPON and these networks for broadband access. We are bringing the same approach to radio access network with disaggregation with RU, DU and bringing this to um, the 4G and 5G networks and we are trying to do the same thing with the optical networks, optical transport networks with open line systems and disaggregated rodents. Okay? Now when you look at all of this together, I hope you recognize that this represents a major, major disruptive innovation in some sense. Okay? And this is a disruptive innovation for network architecture and more importantly, this is a disruptive innovation for the business model of networking industry of last 40, 50 years. And when you think about it that way, you are not surprised that most of our leading OEMs find it very difficult to decide 
how to deal with this disruptive innovation should they embrace it if they embrace it that means they are going to cannibalizing their products and revenues of today okay and so not surprisingly we find it difficult to get developers committed to our platforms and solution from the leading oems because today most of the developers in the networking industry are in these oems okay and so what that means is that we have found it difficult to build developer communities around our open source platforms and solutions so what that meant is open networking foundation and our operators ended up creating inventing a new open source model that we call curated open source and curated communities okay and that is how we have been building some amazing open source platforms and solutions but before i get to them uh, let me tell you what we mean by curated open source and curated open source communities so let's begin with the operators so when you think about AT&T Deutsche Telekom uh, NTT China Unicoms these are some of the operators that we work with these are the operators that operate own and operate some of the largest infrastructure in the world they are all committed to the transformation i was talking about transforming that infrastructure so they can build it with disaggregation open source sdn vpn vnf and all of that okay now these are the operators that know how they are going to go through this transformation what are the use cases that are important to them what are the priorities for them and so that is why we start with them and then with these operators we decide what are the particular solutions particular use cases that we are going to focus on and that is what they are the one that prioritize what is important and what is onf and this community should pursue okay then we have onf and an engineering team so we have a team of maybe 30 people uh, that are part of open networking foundation sometimes our board members and others in the industry have described this team of 30 people as small and mighty team and the interesting thing is that this team has no legacy to protect they are not of uh, trying to push particular agenda except the mission that we are after and so they are able to pursue disruptive architectures disruptive solution with lot of passion and number of times we have done done things then people said this is impossible to do or this is crazy to do and that is the kinds of things we have done um, uh, again and again uh, with our platform then another important thing is now operators also bring a supply chain partners into this ecosystem and these are the supply chain partners that are committed to this mission mission of disaggregation the mission of sdn nfv and open source so once these supply chain partners are part of this ecosystem then they work closely with the operators they work on platforms and solutions that the operators care about and operators want to take it into deployment as a result they don't have to do lot of guess work about what operators want and what operators are going to deploy they are working hand in hand with the operators okay as a result for these supply chain partners there is significant benefit in terms of reduced time to market and because the supply chain partners are complementary with each other that is they are not competing head on or they are working together they also realize lot of benefits of shared r&d and that is significantly reduce r&d cost for creating these platforms and solutions that operators are wanting to deploy so in some sense this is kind of what we mean by this curated open source model and the community that we have been building now here is the community that it looks like for the all the reasons i mentioned it's not surprising that we have our top operators these are our board members these are the people that own and operate the network they know what the strategic priorities ought to be and they provide the strategic direction and guidance to open networking foundation these are the supply chain partners that the operators have recruited 
and they work together to create these platforms and solutions that the operators want to take it into deployment. Of course, we extend this value proposition to many more operators that are members of ONF and our ecosystem and on top of that we have supply chain people and uh, the collaborators. So this ecosystem is approximately 150, 160 companies uh, but this is how this ecosystem works which is kind of unique in open source and how we do things. Okay, so that was all about our mission, our, how we operate, how this curated open source model is. Now let me quickly walk you through what are the open source platforms and solutions that we have been building for last few years. So let me begin with Stratum. So if you take a packet switch, a white box packet switch, Stratum is a thin switch operating system that sits on top of the, the white box packet switch for example and it supports these SDN interfaces. We call them next generation SDN interfaces that is beyond open flow. So supports like P4, P4 runtime, open config, GNMI, GNOI and I will talk about that in just a minute more. Similar to Stratum, we have another open source platform that we call Volta. It is a, again a thin software layer that creates an open flow abstraction or a uniform hardware abstraction on top of variety of OLT devices that make up the GPON and the broadband access networks. Okay, so again you have an, a uniform open flow abstraction on this particular device. Similarly, we have built an XRAN controller that does the same thing, makes a, a radio access network, a disaggregated radio access network that is SDN enabled and on top of that you can build services and similarly we use disaggregated open line systems and rodents and then on top of that we use ONOS as the SDN controller or you can think of that as an SDN network operating system and that is designed for scale, performance and high availability. And then on top of that, we have this open source disaggregated and virtualized EPC uh, thanks to Intel and Sprint, we got this uh, release 13 compliant uh, implementation that is again disaggregated and virtualized. And this is a almost production ready that it is going into production in Sprint uh, and uh, DT uh, sometime later this year, okay. And uh, then on top of that, we build a variety of services and these you can think of them as virtual network functions, you can think of them as services, but we have a portfolio of 30 or so services that are uh, part of this portfolio. And then finally, we have a platform that we call XOS. So this is the platform that is, you can think of it as a service operating system or a, a platform that does service lifecycle management, service composition and putting service graphs or service meshes together and managing those services. So for a second, if you look at this particular software stack that we have built, you can see this is a software stack that you can take it into broadband access, you can take that into mobile wireless, packet core and much more. And now this is only the half of the story because now the challenge is on one hand to do the innovation, you do need disaggregation and this open source platform. But when it comes to deployment, the operators do want integrated solutions. They don't want disaggregated components. There are very, very few operators that can afford to take all these disaggregated component, put it together and deploy that in the production network. So you do need integrated solution and that represents a challenge and that's what ONF kind of, because of the requirement, we kind of stepped up to create some integrated solutions as well. And let me briefly tell you about some of them. So the first one is what we call trellis as the NFV fabric, okay? And so what that particular solution does, it brings together open flow white box switches, okay? Those are uh, kind of what I already mentioned. Uh, they may, right now they may be running OFDPA, but in the future they will run Stratum. On top of that ONOS as the network uh, operating system or SDN control plane. And then there are set up application that turn this into a distributed leaf spine fabric, 
okay and the good news here is that there is a tier 1 operator in the us that has already deployed this distributed leaf spine fabric into their production network in multiple geographies and that is carrying uh, uh, traffic from many i mean thousands of live customers and if you look at their plan they are going to scale it to many many geographies uh, in 2019 and there are plans to deploy that in some other operator networks as well the second solution that integrated solution that we have enabled is something called SIBA. It stands for SDN Enable Broadband Access. Okay, and this is kind of bringing SDN to the uh, GPON, XGSPON, and some of the broadband access networks. Where we bring in this solution, we bring again open flow enabled switches, white box switches, the OLT devices that I mentioned to you uh, that uh, run Volta on the top and uh, become part of SDN. And then, of course, ONAS is the operating system, XOS and NAM, and a set of services. This software stack that is sitting on top of these devices also provides FCAPS capability that all the operators want. And then the software stack integrates with the OSS BSS of the operators. And here, AT&T, Deutsche Telekom, Turk Telecom, Telefonica are some of the operators that have publicly stated that they are doing trials with this and they have plans to take this into production in 2019 and beyond. Uh, the next solution that we are building is you can think of that we haven't picked the name yet. We informally call this next generation SDN stack. And again, it begins with white box switches and stratum. And as I mentioned, stratum is the one that supports all these next generation interfaces, P4, P4 runtime and all of that. And then now we are also building the next generation ONOS. Um, and then on top of that, a set of services. And now this particular next generation SDN stack is going to become the foundation for all the other solutions that we build. So we are going to transition from open flow based SDN to P4, uh, open config, GNMI, and all of that uh, as we go forward. So to just give you a little more context about this, so as you know, uh, we started with open flow as the SDN thing, uh, separation of control and forwarding, open flow was the protocol that defined that. But that protocol was a standard. It was kind of defined and relatively static. And as a result, it was really not allowing you to specify the forwarding behavior dynamically in software and um, making it easy. Also, we didn't have much of configuration. We didn't have much of operation that were part of the SDN architecture. Okay. Now, what we have done um, with all the advancements that have happened, that you can have a programmable forwarding plane, a for, uh, forwarding thing, or you can have fixed function. But what we can do is to allow a network operator to be able to specify the forwarding behavior they want in P4 in a higher level domain specific programming language. And through a compiler, you can compile that forwarding behavior and then instantiate that in the switching or in the forwarding plane as well as in the control plane using something called P4 runtime. Okay? And then we are also trying to support configuration now and the operations. For configuration, we are supporting open config and GNMI. And for operations, we are supporting the GNOI protocol. And these are the interfaces that Google has successfully used in their network. And we are now trying to adopt them in this next generation SDN. Okay? And then, and so that is what makes the stratum. And as I mentioned now, we have begun some work on next generation ONOS, where on one hand, we want to support the next generation SDN interfaces, but also we are re-architecting ONOS so we can bring microservices based ideas and try to make that ONOS a very, very, um, what should I say, tighter footprint for a given use case. So that for a given use case, you can definitely customize it for that particular uh, use case. And so together, our goal is to bring two big benefits to the network operators. So the first big benefit we want to bring to the network operators with this is enable operators to completely control of their network. They can specify their uh, behavior uh, in the P4 and compile it, and then be able to achieve this zero touch networking for verification, uh, for network debugging, change management, and lifecycle management. Okay? Uh, 
Okay, so uh, briefly I'm going to talk about another particular thing that's a converge multi-axis and core. In some sense, this is the most important thing. So here what we're trying to do is to bring all these pieces together into a converge axis and edge, okay? And this is, there are many operators that are supporting us, but let me give you the problem statement and you know, what we are trying to enable. So the first thing is that the network operators operate many networks, you may know this, right? For every access technology, wireline, for wireless, different kinds of wireless network, they end up operating many infrastructures, okay? And they end up deploying lots of physical devices in order to operate this infrastructure. As you can imagine, this is very capex and opex um, intensive and it makes their life much harder and this is only going to get worse with 5G and IoT. So the holy grail in the operator world is, can you build a single infrastructure where only the access link is unique depending on the access technology, but rest of the infrastructure can be the same, okay? And that is what we are trying to enable where not only the infrastructure is the same, you can also have seamless services. That is a service can migrate from one network to another and a user can migrate in a seamless fashion without having to worry about which access network you are on. Okay. So I'm just, so the interesting thing here is that because of all these innovations I'm talking about, what is considered this holy, holy grail of conversion becomes possible. Because if you have all this disaggregation, you have this virtualization, then you can combine these functionalities for multiple access technologies and you don't have to have multiple networks. So all these innovations I was talking about, we are able to bring them together and be able to build a single platform that brings all of these together for wireless as well as wireline networks. I'm sorry, I'm running out of time, so I will not go in, but give me one minute to wrap it up. So, but the idea is we are able to now show that everything that we did for wireline as well as the wireless, because we did that with disaggregation and because we did this is virtual software function, we are able to bring them together. And in fact, if you are familiar with our architecture called COD, it actually brings all of these pieces together. And now we are leveraging all of this to create this converge uh, multi-axis uh, with number of operators. Okay, my last slide, I will jump to this, okay? So thanks for sitting through all these PowerPoint slides and very high level overview. But interesting thing is that everything I said is here on the floor. You can go and check out all these develop, I mean the platform solutions, integrated things I talked about, all of them are here. Lot of developers are there from the community. Go and ask hard questions about implementations and what we have done. And the last comment, if you like what you see, don't be shy. Come and join us and together we can make this transformation happen. Thank you.